just happened. Um, so how do, we, how do we work and how does SAFE actually think about uh, planning? Um, there is this idea in SAFE called an increment, which is basically five sprints in a row, and you do a sort of a high-level planning based on that. It could look like a big batch of stuff, but we need to remember that this is only a, a planning session, a synchronization session, a session where we align roughly about what we're going to work on for the next uh, period. So it has nothing to do with releases. We can release several times a day, if that's what we want, and get feedback on what we're actually working on. What we also need to think about is what is planning and what is a plan. So we have a, a little bit of a love-hate relationship to planning in Agile, right? And um, uh, it's the same thing, actually, in the military, as I mentioned. This uh, guy. Eisenhower says that plants are worthless. He's really, really hard on plants, right? And uh, he has this other idea that planning is everything. So what does he mean by that? How can the output of planning, a plan, be worthless? Um, and, and then planning still be worth something? The, his idea is that it's really not the plan which is the output of the planning. The, the output of the planning is alignment. You know, a shared mental model about what can be achieved, where are the risks, and what we need to look out for when we are executing. So it's really a tool, this uh, you know, three months planning uh, session that I'm going to talk about in a bit, called PI planning, it's really a tool to get a common understanding of and, and decentralize uh, execution and make communication easier while we execute. So if you're thinking about planning like this, sort of a decision tree, tree where you need to find the single best plan when you start out, you know, that, that's not what we are looking for in, in SAFE. What we're looking for is a rough guidance on a mission. What is it we're trying to achieve? What is it the outcome, the difference we want to make to the customers? And we want to have a shared understanding of it, give us a general uh, direction. And we want to minimize the constraints so that the teams can actually as they execute, uh, choose their own way through this uh, to maximize the, the impact of the customers. So if, if we look at the individual sprints that we execute in this uh, increment, they look pretty much like a normal Scrum uh, meetings. That this would be a calendar. You have your planning, your refinement meetings. So there's a couple of red dots there. They're called Art Sync. It's basically Scrum of Scrums. You have the same thing for, for product management. And then, in the end, the teams demo, but they do that individually, and then they also have a common system demo, where everybody shows to each other what they have done. We were only four teams. Safe actually says hey, you need to be five to 12. Uh, we thought we might want to check it out anyway with the only four, but we modified it a bit actually here, because we were so few people that uh, instead of only, or instead of first doing team demos and then uh, doing a common system demo, we actually just put that all together. We were few people enough that uh, that made sense for us, and that has worked out okay. The other thing is the team retrospects. Um, SAFE says that you should do that on team level, but we wanted to test also uh, what would happen if we did them first on team level and then put them uh, together to sort of share their learnings. And that has turned out to be really amazing, actually. Um, I don't know if some of you have uh, issues or feel on teams where they feel sometimes that retrospects are not, you're not getting all the benefit out of it. Um, what, what we saw was that as soon as people start sharing and actually showing a little bit, being a little bit vulnerable about what they are challenged with in their teams, and, and you see that uh, from another team that, hey, these guys are actually sharing it and they're doing something about it. It sort of creates this, you know, raises the bar a little bit. We all want to, you know, get something out of our retrospects. Um, so that was that has been uh, pretty nice. And of course, you also get, uh, you know, get to help each other and share uh, uh, solutions to different problems. Turns out a lot of the problems are actually the same, um, right? Then, uh, then there is this IP sprint, which really is a dual purpose thing. It's a buffer, first of all, so when you do your three months planning, you don't take that capacity into account. 
And then uh, you also have some, uh, some events in there. You could do hackathons, you could do uh, some planning preparation, of course not for everybody, but some people might be a little bit more involved with that. Then you could put your, if you have any you know, education activities, this is a nice place to, to do it. You have an inspect and adapt workshop, which is basically a, a full all room, uh, all people in a room meeting where you're doing a common retrospect. Uh, that, that has been a, a, a pretty cool thing also. We'll talk a bit about that later. Um, then there's a PI planning uh, two-day workshop um, where a lot of stuff is going on. And this is really important from the perspective of alignment. And that is the purpose of it. So you start out with uh, understanding the big picture. We have different peoples going on the scene there. Uh, we have our product management talking about what sort of big things do they think we need to work on, what are the challenges they see uh, across teams that, uh, that we should help with. And then the idea is that later on, as the teams actually execute on these features that he will present, uh, they are allowed to do lean startup and lean UX practices, right? So this is not a constraint that you must do this, you must deliver this. It's just, you know, I have I've spent some work on you know, trying to gather the big picture and, and this is what I see go fetch, go uh, solve these problems. So with stuff like this, you know, he asked uh, a lot of the users, what are you actually uh, thinking about our product? Is it like solving the stuff that we, uh, that we uh, hope to do? We also have, uh, well, we didn't have it in the beginning actually, but uh, this uh, girl, Katrina, um, is a UX uh, specialist or whatever you could call her. She, uh, after a month or so, we figured out that, hey, we, we are going in a little bit different directions UX-wise. So we need to you know, have some alignment on it. And she uh, stood forward, and uh, she's now presenting on these uh, meetings also to give us some rough uh, alignment on, on where to go, give us some guidance. But she's really just a team member who have this additional task of trying to align us on it. This is uh, Sina. She is our architect. So I asked her on a couple of weeks ago when we did the last uh, PI planning, and let's see what One she says. One question regarding you know, your role as an architect. You know, in, in the Agile Manifesto, there's this uh, wording that the best architecture comes from self-organizing teams. So it seems that your role is not Agile because you're, you're deciding everything you know, regarding architecture. You know. What, I'm not what? deciding everything, I'm just making sure that the teams are aligned on it. Oh. I'm not disagreeing that uh, self-organizing is good, but it's only good if you're not you know, going in different directions all the time. Okay, so how, how do you help them align on that? I look at what tasks are they doing or what features are they doing, and uh, are different teams doing features that are alike and that we should should make sure you same the same services and stuff like that. Okay. Um, we're, we're in the middle of a PI right now and uh, on day two and yesterday I noticed you on the stage there giving a presentation about some of the things coming in the future. When you prepared for that uh, thing, what went through your mind? What, you know, what did you think about and what did you want to achieve with it? Well, I wanted to uh, give a short introduction to these new microservices, <laughs> microservices that are coming. And I just thought that this was important for everyone to know. Um, so I didn't really have a lot of time to prepare for it. Uh, but that was yeah, pretty much what I was thinking. Okay. But it's important for people to know. And uh, yeah. OK, thanks a lot. Sure. So th this is a sentence from uh, SAFE, the teams deserve to see the bigger picture and uh, be empowered to design their part. Um, you might ask, you know, wh why can't the team just, teams just figure this out themselves? Uh, but, but that's actually what they're doing. Uh, Sina is part of a team. She just you know, takes on this extra responsibility of you know, looking, looking uh, getting the big picture for everyone, but everybody is allowed to coordinate. She's not having a lot of authority, actually. Um, then on the, after we have heard a lot about uh, the big picture stuff, uh, we uh, have team breakouts. We have a common vision now. We know what we're trying to achieve. 
and uh, we know where we have suffered a little bit in the past. And now it's the team's turn to figure out what can we actually uh, do here. And so it's sort of like a, a backlog refinement session that you do in the team breakout. After that, we have a team review. So we just quickly go through the big picture of each individual teams. What do they think will be achievable and, and what are they struggling a little bit with? And then everybody uh, gets a common understanding of it. Uh, you know, probably also realize that there's going to be some problems that we need to change the plan a little bit. So we'll talk about that. Then the next day, we'll uh, have had time to think a bit about it, get some uh, sleep, and then we'll present to everybody a change in direction if it's needed. And then we'll have uh, another team breakout. So this is one of our Indian uh, developers, and I asked her a few questions also. So let's hear what she thinks about this PI planning thing. Um, right now we're in the middle of, a, or actually in the end of a PI planning, so this two-day planning session. It, it sounds pretty boring. I, I mean, I can imagine that uh, you'd rather be coding and, you know, doing uh, valuable stuff. But, you know, what, what how, is it valuable also to do this PI planning thing? And uh, well, I don't find it like boring. Uh, well, the, whatever the valuable coding that we do, it has to get us kick start. So I guess uh, this PI planning is where we get to start everything. And uh, uh, we, uh, we cannot do coding. We do not know what to develop if we do not have this planning. This is the most efficient uh, part, the start of uh, all the coding that follows us. So I believe uh, it's, it's not that boring. You get to discuss uh, what all tasks or what all things uh, you are about to develop in the further process. So you just know that why you are uh, going to do that work. You know what business value that will come out at the end of the uh, coding that you do. So it's more of like you know you're uh, going to do something that users or the customers will be happy at the end of the day. So this PI planning is a very essential part of all the coding that is going to get followed up. Okay. So uh, what, what I'm hearing her saying is that this actually puts some purpose into her life. Um, you mentioned in the beginning there, Christian, that uh, that was one thing we were struggling with. And we actually also saw that on some of the metrics on, on happiness that the TDC is collecting. And uh, those have gone up rapidly after we started doing this stuff. So um, that's pretty cool, I think. Then we do a, a quick review of the plans after another team breakout. So you have this iteration again on uh, you know, collecting the big picture, then going out, doing detailed stuff, collecting the big picture again. And uh, then you have some sessions in the end where you sort of look at the risk. We want to understand also uh, you know, what is going to be hard to achieve. And remember, uh, you know, back then where they were doing pure waterfall, they, they you know, the IT department were mostly looking for the technical risks and the business were looking at the business risk. But here we do it in a collected forum. We all want to understand the risks on both, uh, both sides, and I think that's really cool also. Then you do a confidence vote, like a fist of five. How sure are we that we can uh, achieve these goals? It has actually worked pretty well for us also. Um, and uh, finally, you do uh, maybe some planning if, if people are not uh, happy with this and, and the retro. So um, that, that's, you know, the basic process of uh, safe. Um